Hard one to, to move past the last couple of days, or how's the team doing? You know, yeah, those those heartbreakers sometimes are just harder than anything, but we, we have to. And there's a lot of great things to take away from it and a lot you can learn from it. And, you know, sometimes you double back on that when you're getting ready to play them again because, you know, time is of the essence. you got to move on and got to get ready for Fresno. But, yeah, it, it. I was, again, like I said before, and when I watched the film, I'm even more proud of my team, the way we competed, the way we overcame that. I and mean, we didn't shoot the ball great, and we were, you know, a bucket away and a bucket here or there where we had a chance to, you know, we had the ball at the end of regulation with a chance to win it. And uh, so, uh, like I said, I just really, really proud of the way we battled. And, you know, you look all across the country and, you know, teams roll into other places and big games like that and get beat by 15 and 20. And we didn't, like I said, we didn't shoot the ball great, and we were a basket away. And I thought both teams did some great things. I mean, you know, you got to credit New Mexico. They they answered every time we made a shot. They, you know, they got ballers, and, you know, all those things I said afterwards are true. And so, but we're good at closing the book, moving on, learning from it, getting better, and that's what we have to do. And that's what this league's about is, is – Man, you're, you're, every game, when you close that, you know, you're out of the frying pan into the fire with the next one. And the next one, we got a Fresno team that looks like they're playing as good as they played all year, in my opinion. And uh, they handled UNLV this weekend, and uh, I thought they looked terrific. So, again, you know, it's the, it goes back to my earlier statement of if you don't show up and play a really good game every night, you're not going to win. And so we got to regroup. We got to we got to get the this place rocking because it makes a difference and it's huge. And and this this place, Extra Mile Arena, helps us. And we need it full. We need the fans here. And uh, you know these Mountain West games have been amazing. And uh, hopefully their the fans come out and we get a sellout or close to it. Was that was that a perfect example of what a crowd can do? Yeah. With- oh, absolutely. I mean. You know, that's why I like you guys making the effort and getting down there and seeing it firsthand because it loses. You know, when you watch it on TV, you're like, well, oh, that looks like a lot of people and it looks like it's loud. But when you're actually in it and feeling it, it gives you more appreciation for what our guys are able to do. I mean, we weathered so many storms and we kind of just leaned into it and, and, you know, they'd make a run and we'd get things corrected and they'd make a run. We And you had to do that about seven times. And our guys just kept doing it. They'd get up five, we'd reel them back in. They'd get, you know, and they'd make a play. The place would go crazy. We'd get things back under control. And that's really, really hard to do. And that takes a mature team. And then, you know, in the stress, most stressful moments, our guys executed. And that's hard to do. You know, guys, all it takes is one guy losing his mind or his head or getting caught up in you know the anxiety of the moment then you can't execute and our guys did as good as you you know as good as you could do uh, with those circumstances and you know it comes down to shot making sometimes and a free throw sometimes and uh you know so, and sometimes the ball just bounces weird a couple times and we had a couple of those so but like i said i was just really proud of our guys these mountain west games are like that we got to we got to just be able to roll up the sleeves and come out and compete our tails off every night. When you go watch the film against, uh, you know, the big men of New Mexico, how did you think that, you know, Naj and Tyson and Mo and, and Lucas played down there? Um, we had our moments of great things. I mean, yeah. Naj gets 13 boards yeah. and, they, you know, those guys are good. Alex, a monster on the glass and their big fella is, he's great. You know, that's the difference of their team this year is that they've added pieces like that that, that you know they're they're doing work. I mean, that's why they beat San Diego State. You know, and uh, those guys do work down there, and it was a battle. And you know, Naj, you know, we're playing quote unquote undersized, but he just never ceases to amaze me. He has 13 boards and comes over and blocks the big guy shot right at the you know on a post move, and you know has six blocks in that other game. I mean, he he just does things that no one thinks he can do, and it's credit to him. He's just you know, he's an achiever and he gets stuff done. I'm, I'm really proud of him and, and the way Tyson's battling, you know, because yeah. they're out of position a little bit sometimes and as far as the size-wise. And I'm just really proud of those guys, their their effort and their toughness inside. What do you see in Fresno? What what do they do best? They, you know, they've always been a great defensive team. He, you know, he teaches defense. 
you know, was assistant San Diego State and knows what he's doing. And they guard you and they're athletic. And, and you know, the other night, they, they were, their offense looked terrific too. They're making shots, they're moving the ball. They're, you know, they got pieces and they they're, look like they're coming together because they had some injuries too. They're getting their guys back. And uh, like I said, it's, uh, when I watched them Saturday, I, I thought, you know, this is, this is a really good team, a lot better than their record. You know, like I said, they've had injuries and things they're dealing with throughout the year, and, and now it looks like they're coming coming together. It seems like every year, you know, regardless of what team he's on, Max does whatever the team needs yeah. him to do. Yeah, I mean, that's is, true. When he's scoring more, is it because the team needs him to score more, or is there part of it too that he's developed, you know, parts of his game that he's confident enough to do it? You know, when you look at our team, we do need him to score yeah. for us to, you know, and and he's carried the weight. It seems like when you know, in those first halves when a lot of guys weren't scoring and then it got us through that and then those other guys came alive too. So, you know, the, and that's the beauty of a guy like him is he scores 21 in the first half. He didn't force a single shot in the second half where a lot of guys would be like, let me go. Let's see if I can get to 50. And uh, he just does whatever it takes to win. That's all he cares about. And that, I mean, you know, you, you talk about guys having great games and, wow, this guy scored 28 and this guy, and they took 20 shots to 21 shots you know guys on other teams got he did that on 14 shots 29 points which is about as efficient as you can be and so that's the key is efficiency a lot of guys can get you know 25 to 35 points I'm not a lot but good player a lot of good players can but sometimes you look and you know there was a kid at Long Beach that scored 46 points at 39 shots or something <laughs> you're like wow that's uh, uh so he that's the beauty of what He's, he cares about one thing. He puts one thing, you know, and that's my team. They yeah. they put what's important first, and that, that's why we're good. Well, sometimes good. sometimes there's stuff that inspires play like that because he had two points against in that Nevada loss, and he's been in double figures ever since. Did you challenge him or anything? Or yeah, did you yeah. Did fire he, under him to get that going? He always responds to challenges. He may not like it the way I do it sometimes. Um, you know, we have a history. and uh, But... The one thing I'll say about it, he, you know, he's an elite competitor. Uh, uh, and so I always try to tap into that. And, you know, that usually works. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, that, that he also, I, I also want him to know, you know, he's playing at an elite level and have that confidence to do it. And, and this team needs it. We just talked to Marcus and he wasn't shy about that. You know, injury affecting his play, not being 100% out yeah. there and just trying to do the best he can. I mean, that, what, these games keep coming game after game. Just what are you seeing from Marcus? Obviously, he says he doesn't think he's playing very well, but you look at the assists and yeah. some of the other things he's still doing. How's he? What's that, he that, doing? That's the, the perfectionist in him, and that's what I have to get him out of, is that basketball is not a game of perfect, and, and you're going to have him say, and, but there's a reason he is a great shooter because he's a perfectionist, and so... He carries that over to the play, you know, and as a point guard and with the ball in your hand so much and so much responsibility on him, you, you're not going to be perfect and you're going to have ups and downs shooting the ball because you're having to do all these other things. And you look at all those other things, he's doing in an elite level, the way he's rebounding, the way he's getting his assist to turnover has been spectacular and running the team and, you know, he's dealing with house for 40 minutes in him and, you know, making it difficult, that stuff takes away from some of your shooting and your offense and but that's where I have to help Marcus understand that you're you know we're not where we are if you're not playing the way you are and um, I'm looking for you know the the one thing where it's not statting out that he's playing up to his abilities is shooting that's the thing he's best at so that's coming so you guys are working with him and you know, loving him up, whatever it takes. Like, what are some of those things that you do to say, well, hey, man? Well, you know, you hey, watch a lot of film. You just, you know, you're always working with them and you're always coaching them and and helping them through these moments because uh, people don't understand what it's like to be in, in those positions. And, and you know, um, I've gone through this a lot with a lot of guys and there's a lot of outside pressure from the world for them to be perfect for our team for their careers, from their, you know, all these people put pressure on these guys that's not, that adds to anxiety and, and sometimes can get focus on different things. And, and I'm not just talking about Marcus, I've seen this over and over through years. And I want him to just enjoy these last 
50 days with his teammates and just because this is the last time he's an amateur you know I said I don't care if you're playing for the Phoenix Suns five years from now you're going to call me and go that was the greatest college basketball was the greatest I had great teammates I had great you know fan support and uh, and and I put too much pressure and didn't take the time to enjoy it enough I want them to enjoy this experience look around be in this moment that because he's earned it and that that's easier said than done when there's a lot of you know there's there's a lot of lot put on these guys and uh, you know it's my job to try to help them through it so you know and I talked to a lot of former players that have gone through this before and they all have one thing in common that they weren't able to enjoy it as much as they wanted to so that's my job to, to let him just be free and and you know just you know I love it when I get to see you know like that game winner hit and he's got that big smile and his teammates are out those are the moments I love him to have I know it's not an excuse but in terms of practice time or whatever else I mean, how much yeah. is he impacted or limited because of the injury yeah, that 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 you know again over my course of my career I've we've had guys that have had to do this and that's hard I mean they get their timing right they get their you know confidence by practicing and it doesn't have to be a ton but you get to a point where you know a guy like that is so valuable you can't lose him out here on the practice floor because you're just trying to get timing and you'd rather have him at 80 percent than zero and uh so, but he, I'm telling you, I think he's making big progress and, and down the stretch we come and he's going to be, he's going to be ready. Uh, I think he's seen, I think he's feeling better and better. Naj has been shooting the ball well, but mm -hmm. it's always interesting to like watch him in pregame. His show, shot is so unorthodox. Like Everything. It, it almost spins sideways. Don't, don't stop at his shot. Yeah. <laughs> Everything Naj does is sure. unorthodox. But and, you watched him forever. Like, did he always have that shot? And like, did anyone, I'm guessing throughout his entire yeah. basketball life, people were trying to like coach that out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like I said, everything Naj has done is just unorthodox. And so you gotta, you gotta, you know, it's a fine line. He's gotta play for in a system like ours and for coaches like us that allow him to be Naj. But that doesn't mean you don't coach him to be a better Naj. And I think we've, there's been a great push and pull with that. And so we're making him better and, and he, but he, he understands that, that, well, there's, you can't just go rogue and <laughs> just because you're Naj being Naj you got to know where you're best at the Inage. And so um, that's what we always try to help him with and what his strengths are and where he can really do damage. And, you know, he's settled into, I mean, the, the stuff he accomplishes out there is really amazing. Six blocks the other night, I mean, that, that's, I don't know if we've ever had in my career here, this guy with six blocks, that's that's remarkable. But don't you think his unorthodoxness or however you would yeah, say that, no, no, it, it works say. to his advantage a lot of times? Yeah, like, oh. no doubt. You're not used to, because he does, he does the, you know, shortest distance between two points for Naj, it's a straight line in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's Naj. Mm -hmm. And so guarding him must be just a joy. You're like, okay, I'm in good position. He goes underneath you on the wrong side. You're like, how could he do that? So, yeah, at times it's a big advantage, I think. With uh, Mo Silla, I mean, I know he had the two turnovers to start overtime, yeah. but you got, you know, some, some teams coming up that have, you know, more traditional big guys. True. I mean, is he, with what you saw there, I mean, is he is He, he gave you... us some great, and, yeah. and again, a credit to his character and toughness. It's so hard to be playing, and then you don't play for a long time, and then you're, then, boom. You're called into action and to be ready. What a credit to him! I was really, really proud of him. And and you know the uh, just a couple bad luck plays to start the overtime for him. And you know I'm rolling the dice there because Tyson's got four fouls. And you know I knew that we needed Tyson down the stretch of that game to win. And so I was gonna you know let Mo get the first couple possessions. And uh, you know but he had. Everything he had done before that was terrific. He made his free throws. He made a nice post move. And so, you know, again, he hasn't had that much game experience. So there's, you know, and so now you're throwing him into game experience in front of 15,000 in, in those moments. And the way he handled it, I thought was great. We build on that.